just six talented cooks are left in the MasterChef competition. They've survived some tough tests to get this far. It's supposed to be 180. Who changed the oven? Now the battle continues as the contestants enter the world of fine dining. Masters of the bench, dinner is served. If you put that in the glasses and it doesn't set, it really is a disaster. And cook for culinary legend, Michelle Rue Jr. Today is all about achieving perfection on a plate. There's no point coming in here and not impressing. You've got to come in and you've got to give it your all. I just don't want to let go at this stage because I've devoted so much to it. I want to, this dream to carry on. It's absolutely critical that I impress today because one person is leaving and I don't want it to be me. Middle Temple, one of the four inns of court that form the backbone of the British legal system. Since the 15th century, all barristers have had to train at one of these inns before they can practice. At the centre of the Middle Temple is its 450-year-old hall and a tradition of formal dinners held regularly to exchange knowledge between barristers and students. Welcome to the Honourable Society of the Middle Temple. Previous members have included Sir Francis Drake, Sir Walter Raleigh, Charles Dickens, Get some sense of the history and tradition. Tonight, your task is mammoth. Your job is to cook an elegant dinner for 230 barristers, including two Supreme Court judges, three Lord Justices, four High Court judges, and 26 QCs. Guys, it has to be perfect. Two hundred and thirty plates of perfection. Yeah, challenging. This is like gotta be the toughest, high pressure thing that um, I've ever done. It's like doing a parachute jump or something. <laughs> We've tested our six in many ways before, but this really is a culmination of everything they've learnt so far. Finesse today has to be key. 230 plates of exquisite, posh food. It'd be bad enough doing 230 shepherd's pies and trifles. To get the job done, the contestants will work in pairs and need a marathon eight hours preparation. We've got a lot, a lot of work to do. Eight hours is a long time for yourselves, not for me. Let's go and get started. Aki and Eamon are on the starter. A fillet of sole, rolled and filled with smoked salmon and a fish and tarragon mousseline, served with a champagne truffle velouté. It sounds divine. There's a lot of components to the dish, so there's quite a lot to think about, especially when we're doing 200 and I don't know how many. <laughs> It was meant to be 220, but they've just sprung on us. There's another thing in banqueting. It's now gone up to about 280. Welcome to the world of banqueting. I've cooked over sole before. Certainly haven't done 230, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever it is. Uh, how many have I done so far? I think I've done five. Are we neat and clean today, Aki? Yes, John. Good. Tom and Andrew are on the main. A tornado of beef with confit of oxtail, potato almondine, and a vegetable parcel. How many dishes would you be sending out at a time? Was it just, just constant, get them out, get them out, get them out? Yeah. Come on. 
on, put it on, put it on. <laughs> That's the way. First, they cook the oxtail with celery, carrot and onion for the confit that will top their beef fillet. It will take, I think, four to five hours to get into a nice confit. OK. OK. Then they make a start prepping 140 kilos of potatoes. And how have you decided to split the labour? With the bean, each task taking so long, it's a case of both of us just jump on, get one thing done and move on to the next thing. Are you actually confident you'll get all this done or you just sort of got your head down and hoping? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, confident. We're going to get it done. So 40 minutes in, you're both grinning. Let's yeah. see if that grin's fell on your face come about 6 o'clock. You've now got the hardest jobs a lot. You've got three desserts to make on one plate. Shalina and Jay's pudding is a chocolate and orange liqueur mousse, spiced pear and a tropical fruit brulee. I'm chopping a field of mangoes. The pears are poached in a mixture of port, spices and citrus fruits. That smells like Christmas. How heavy is this? Whoa! Leave it for me. No. <laughs> As always, timing, you know what I mean? With these, with these tasks, you're always looking at the clock, looking at the clock, you know what I mean? And, and believe me, you think that, like, uh, oh, don't worry about it, I've got a bit of time, that clock goes quick. All right, let's have a listen in, boys and girls. We've got about six hours to go. Hope you're all on track. Fish filleted, Aki can make a start on the fish stock that forms the base of the champagne velouté. This is a marathon, but I'm sprinting it. I'm going to keep sprinting my marathon. I mean, whatever it was, I just boiled potatoes in. I mean, it's half the size of my bath, you know. I've never seen anything like it. The potatoes are ready for mashing. Now Tom and Andrew can start on their veg prep. Peeling and chopping 40 kilos of carrots. Clean us out. We've got asparagus to do now. 35 kilos of asparagus. And 30 kilos of shallots. At least three per person, so six, seven hundred. I've done two in the time we were talking to you, so about 10, 15 seconds each. Uh, it's a lot of time, yeah. about anything at the moment. Uh, I'm, I've decided to be calm today. Calm, stress-free. Ah! I knew that was going to happen. Shalina and Jay are on track and are getting their 280 individual creme brulees ready for the oven. You know what? I don't mind the mass element, it's the fine bit that I'm not so good at. I don't have a steady hand, so this is why it's a little bit tricky. you got a steady man with you, that's what it is, darling. Here we go, go. Careful. Nice and steady. Gosh. Up a bit, Jay. Go back, oh, go it's back. Jammed, though. It's jammed, though, it's jammed. Is it going in? It's OK, yeah. it's OK, okay. Right. OK, let's get out of here. Formal dinner at Middle Temple dates back to the 16th century, when Queen Elizabeth I donated the 29-foot table that forms the centrepiece of the hall. It was here that barristers would pass on their practices and procedures. Today, to be called to the bar, pupils must attend 12 qualifying discussions, many of which occur across the dinner table. We have a high expectations, we have a wonderful kitchen, we have a very good wine cellar, and these meals are important to all of us. We have a history of making sure that everything is spot on every time and have done for centuries. If the food is not up to scratch, I think that the people who will be dining here this evening will be quite willing to give a frank opinion. There are less
less than four hours until service. Aki starts filling the sole with a layer of smoked salmon and the tarragon and fish mousse. While Eamon rolls them into a roulade. Oh, I reckon we're soul mates for today. Exactly. How do you feel about 280 perfectly cooked poppyettes of fish being served all at the same time? Right now, a little terrified, John, to be honest with you. You're putting your elbow into the moose, Aki. Come here, sweetheart. Come here. You are mucky again, aren't you? No. <laughs> You can't help yourself. Across the kitchen, Andrew and Tom are still peeling their veg. I've been peeling shallots for about an hour, and that's all I've got. Uh, and we've got another one of these. Everything we do, we've got to make 280 portions. Even if you do, like, three a minute, uh, we're not going to get it done. So good, take it off, take it off. Yeah. So that's set me back already. That takes, you know, a couple of seconds each one. And when you're doing 600 of them, that's a lot of minutes. Well, that's, he's getting tight. I know you've got a lot yeah. to do. The problem with Andrew and Tom is actually, in my opinion, they're not getting stuck in. When they put their heads down, they need to absolutely graft and really move. OK, you'll do 600. Then do them really fast. Don't do them like you're at home peeling an onion. Get on with it, boys. Get on with it. There's just over three hours until service. Shalina and Jay's pears are poached. And Aki and Eamon's teamwork is paying off. Their fish course is prepped, except for the pastry fleurons that will garnish the dish. Egg them up. Different sizes, different shapes. Again, some are getting very small. Yeah. These ones are good. Oh. <laughs> With their veg finally peeled, Andrew and Tom can now move on to rolling 280 individual vegetable parcels. Yeah, I'm worried because we've got three hours to go and we've only done 20 vegetable parcels. The simple fact is, guys, now what you're going to have to do is to start to work like in a professional kitchen rather than actually just doing one plate of food. Next one you roll, yeah, yeah, leave it on the bench, it. don't move it. Yeah. OK? Tight, pull it back, leave it on the bench. OK, you know? go again. Roll the whole lot and then trade. One, two, three, four, five, six. Suddenly you've got a system going, OK? Push, 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 guys. It's very obvious that Tom and Andrew are in the caca. Calorie expression, meaning not doing very well, not really keeping up, probably not going to be on time for dinner. We've still got everything to do. We need to get the sauce reducing down more. We need to finish the oxtail. Tom's still working on these vegetables. There's nothing, nothing is finished yet. The main, those main course boys need either a big hug or they need to kick up the bottom. I'm going to figure out which one and deliver it. So the fact is we're not going to get it out without some help. Is that right? Yeah. Don't worry, it's only the leading law brains of the country. We'll be all right. What's next, Chef? Next is Pom Armandine. What's that? Pom Armandine? Right. With Tom and Andrew so far behind, the chef calls Eamon and Aki to help prepare their Armandine potatoes. Uh, well, if, if we're here twiddling our thumbs waiting for something to cook, we may as well be getting on with something. So, simple as that. How do we feel about all the lumps in it? I'll be honest with you, I haven't come across any lumps yet. It's definitely a lump. Yeah, there's lots of them. Are you joking? Well, I don't want to be lumpy, so through a ricer it goes. This is going to take, like, an hour. Well, it's an hour we haven't got, so let's get going. Oh, this is going to take forever. The guys on the stars, Eamon and Aki, I know you're helping out. Please keep your eyes on the prize. Don't help out so much that you actually let yourselves down. I felt like a little ant climbing up a Mount Everest of potatoes. Take them out, Chef. Yeah, let's just make sure the thermos are They're lovely. 
Hey, I'm impressed. Well done. Thanks, Chef. The creme brulees are set. Shalina now turns her attention to the third dessert, the chocolate mousse. She starts by making an egg custard sabayon, which will be mixed with chocolate and egg whites to make the mousse. If there's not enough air in it, then it's going to end up being some dense lump of chocolate. So this bit is crucial. Actually, to be fair, all of it is really crucial for a mousse. I think every single stage means something. Actually, I don't know if this feels right. This isn't right. This one really hard on me. That's not right, is it? Oh. Yeah, it's just like, solidified. Can I salvage it at all? No, it's gone. Do you know what you've done wrong? The chocolate cooled down. No. Oh. Your sugar's not cooked out in your zabion. Your zabion's not cooked out enough. If your zabion is not cooked out enough, then what happens is all you have is raw alcohol hitting chocolate, and that makes the whole thing go solid. You're going to add in some double cream, so that will get that chocolate moving again. Yeah. I've got to somehow get a chocolate mousse. I've got no more chocolate in the building, so this has got, this has got to work. Holes, legs, everything crossed. This doesn't look like it's going to turn into a mousse. It looks like soup. Stop for a sec. Stop. You've got to be confident where this is going to set. So put some in a small tray, put in the blast chiller before you put all of it in the glasses, because if you put that in the glasses and it doesn't set, it really is a disaster. That's the height. Yep. So we'll just double check using that then. Is it going to set? We've got to find out now. OK. How long do we wait? Well, five minutes. It's all right. No. Jay and Shalina may have to have a rethink here. What we're going to need to say to our hall full of legal minds is we're giving them a slimming dessert. We take the chocolate off, we're worried about your health, have a pair. It's seven o'clock. Before dining, the barristers must put on the gowns worn in court. Master Treasurer, Masters of the Bench, dinner is served. to get their soul and the samphire steamed before service. Ah, that's how I feel right now. We are behind schedule. We need to make a move. Please stand by. All right, do you want the staff people upstairs now? Move the train, move the train. Yeah. We, we all serve, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 A temporary plating station has been set up next to the dining hall and they will need Jay and Shalina's help to get the starters out hot. Good Lord, bless us and these thy good gifts, which we receive of thy bounteous liberality. Amen. There are lots of judges sitting here on high table and if they're not pleased, goodness knows what might happen. What's going to happen now is the staff will come in, two plates at a time, go out that door and serve the customers. Let's move on. These are already coming at me all sorts of different ways, yeah? Folks, we've done four plates in one minute. We normally do 200 plates in 
10 minutes. We cannot go this slowly. Just bring it a little lower. Thank you. Next. Keep going. There you go. Nearer me, please. Nearer me, please. Come on, guys, don't slow down. Not now. Last one, look, last one. Hello, Chef. Hello, Chef. Okay, just, just. Aki and Eamon have served a fillet of sole balmoral, samphire, a pastry fleuron, and a champagne sauce with shaved truffle. It's a nice firm fish, which I like, and it was uh, oh, good. Oh, I thought it was delicious, and uh, just the right quantity of stuffed fish. I thought it was delicious. I thought the fish was perfectly cooked. I thought the samphire was lovely. Um, I really enjoyed it. The food was substantial, but also tasty. Very happy. Uh, the fish was beautifully cooked, not overcooked, so all in all, very good. My only complaint was it was too big. It's now Andrew and Tom's turn to deliver a faultless main course. But Andrew still has to sear the 280 fillets of beef while Tom fries off the almondine potatoes. That's raw, mate. They're not going to eat that. I can tell it's cold in the middle. Oh, okay, leave, leave, no, leave. That's cold. You know who we're feeding up there. Important people. I mean, we could all end up being sued here, Andrew. Tom, you've yeah. got to make sure that beef is cooked, buddy. If you're not cooked, that chef is going to kill you. That's one. Good man. In you go. I think we've got everything. I haven't got my license for driving one of these. Next course needs to be served in the next three minutes. We need to start, and it needs to take 12 minutes this time, please. Andrew or Tom, which one of you is going to run the service? We're going to put different... No, no, who's going to be in charge of the service? I am. You are? Yeah. OK, so try and get the plate with the, with the cross at the top. Yeah. Andrew. Yes? Show them. You've got one over there finished. So Tom's going to, Tom's going to put the there at, at 2 o'clock. Yeah, you're going to put that at 10 o'clock. Service time, please. We can't wait any longer now. We need to move. Right, guys, you've done two so far. You've only got 236 to go. It's looking good. Let's just get faster, OK? I think we're, we're getting there. We're over halfway. We need to make sure we move a bit faster. We've still got more than half, I'm afraid, to go. Look at this. It's like a machine. Don't slow down, guys. Come on. You're almost there. Come on, guys. Last 30 plates. Let's go. That's it, mate. Get rid of them. That's it. Plates Stop. down. Stop. Whew. Well done. Well done, mate. I, I never thought you could do that. The whole day is full on. It's eight hours of non-stop work. Tom and Andrew's main is a tornado of beef topped with oxtail confit, potato almondine, vegetable parcel, woodland mushrooms and a red wine jus. I thought the beef was absolutely superb and I'm actually amazed that cooking for so many people, you can get it so perfect. It's nice and tender, it's lovely and I like the fact that it's slightly rare. It's quite big, um, but then there are lots of men here and they have larger capacities than women, I think. The crust to the potato is, is excellent. I mean, the whole thing is, is as good as you can get. The meat was really uh, excellently well done, so, um, you know, 10 out of 10 for that one, I suppose. All right. I could gush forever about it. It was really quite knockout, I have to say, really stellar.
finally, it's Shalina and Jay's dessert trio. <laughs> that was a very, very close call. We're going to start bringing over the trolleys. We've got to get all this food upstairs and we've got to get it on the plates. Yes, Chef. To go. Me and uh, Andrew are doing the pears. Thomas is on the strawberries. Eamon, can you follow up with the chocolate mousse? Ake, can you put the creme brulee on, please? Yep. OK, boys? Pear, 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 pear. Let's go, go, go. How's our mousse, Shalina? The mousse is a mousse, which is always helpful. Come on, we're almost there. Keep it going. All well done. Lovely. I absolutely love it. I've never seen a hallway full of desserts. It's brilliant. Service, please. Service, please. That's it, nice and steady. Last plate. Thank you. <laughs> Too tired. Shalina and Jay's pudding is a chocolate and orange liqueur mousse, autumn spiced pear with a port syrup, and tropical fruit brulee. Absolutely delicious, and I love that crunchy feel and that lovely, fruity, mouth-filling flavours that emerge. <laughs> Creme brulee, uh, meant to be passion fruit and mango. I didn't detect the mango, and there wasn't enough passion. The pear was delicious. Well, everything was delicious, but creme brulee. Yes, that we're all creme brulee fans. This mousse wasn't really a mousse. It was too runny and more drinkable than eatable. Pudding was, was a big ask. They didn't quite pull it off, but hey, who cares? The, the taste was good. I ate it all. Here, come on. Oh, we don't do this up north, do we? <laughs> we pushed them to the absolute edge, John, today. I mean, that was a huge test. To feed that many people in that sort of surroundings with food that complex is massive. Beer. I'm trying to think of a part of me that doesn't ache. <laughs> Hang on, just here. This isn't hurting, just here. I'm really relieved, but I'm also really chuffed. Chuffed a bit that all six of us managed to feed the masses in such an amazing building. It might be hard, it might be mentally exhausting, but it's, you know, an absolute dream compared to real life. It seems unfair to say it. I know they've just got through a huge task, John, but pretty soon one of these guys is going to have to leave the competition. For me, there is not a cigarette paper between them. I just simply can't wait to see what happens next. Welcome back. Your last task was mammoth. But now we want you to step it up one more time. We want you to cook for us two elegant courses that would proudly sit on any fine dining menu. It is time to impress, guys, because at the end of this, one of you will be leaving us. 
Right, we have a very special guest joining us. Without doubt, one of the finest and most respected chefs in the country. Michelle Rue Jr. Today is all about fine dining, achieving standards, perfection on a plate. I've been told you're pretty good. Now's the time to prove it. One and a half hours, ladies and gentlemen, two courses, and it has to impress. Let's cook. This is where we see if they have the finesse. Do they have the ability to take their food that one more step forward? Now is about finding out who has got the real makings of a pro. I think the longer I've stayed in the competition, I've realised I could potentially be a professional chef, and that makes me really excited. You've combined skills and real understanding of cooking. Well done. Shalini, your menu is? A lobster curry with potato badger, which is like a deep-fried spicy potato. And the dessert is um, my idea of key lime pie. It's all the flavours of key lime pie. You've got a curry and an experimental dessert to serve up to Michelle Roux. Uh, that's pretty scary, yeah. I had a real big look of shock on my face when he walked through the door. But I really want to impress all three of you today. I really, really want this. Sweet lobster, spicy curry, heaven. But it has to be presented beautifully. How can a lobster curry be presented beautifully? I think that some of the plates that I've put out have already been fine dining. The smoked herring is absolutely delicious. I think he's really nailed it. I haven't always got the flavours right. In my mouth now, I've got a floral, sweet, oaty fish biscuit. It's just a bit weird. Whiskey, honey, for me, it doesn't belong in this dish. I've got a point to prove in the kitchen today, and my dish is, uh, well, you could call it an apology to Tom Kitchen. I'm cooking roast grouse, a Scottish dish, I'm half Scottish, and I'm going to do it with uh, whiskey and honey and heather. Yeah, <laughs> whiskey, honey, with blackberries, and I'm doing it with, with neeps and a Savoy sausage. Once again, two ingredients which really are your nemesis, honey and whiskey with red mullet. Yeah. Today we're serving it with grouse. With grouse it works. With fish it doesn't work, with grouse it works. And dessert? Chocolate and uh, black olive caramel tart with a rosemary ice cream. Uh, a what? A, a what? A what? Chocolate and black olive caramel tart with a rosemary ice cream. Cool. Dessert, what an extraordinary risk. Chocolate and black olive tart with rosemary ice cream. I don't know, it's a little bit of a strange combination. I don't know. I can understand. Something inside me here says, yes, maybe. A little bit of salty taste with a chocolate can work. But it's a very fine line. Very, very fine line. 50 minutes gone. Over halfway. I've had a few ups and downs. You're cooking, not in question. But at what stage are you going to stand up and go, look at me? They want to see more. They want to see a bit of an edgy attitude from me. So that's basically what I'm doing today. Fine dining today, Jay. Yep. Pan fried halibut on a bed of chorizo braised plum tomatoes with uh, a crab and new potato salad underneath with some smoked shaved marabou. Whoa, that's one dish? Yep. And what's the next dish? Chocolate hazelnut tart with Cointreau cream. You are absolutely going for it. You told me to. You thought that was being too safe. I don't want you thinking that, do you know what I mean? So I'm pushing the boundaries. So what do you want us to think of you? <laughs> I don't know, just think that I'm a good cook, that'll do. 
look around the room. Yeah, I don't know. There's only five others, mate. I know. You've got to be a pretty good cook to be here. Yeah, I know. I appreciate that. Can you honestly balance halibut, tomato, chorizo, bone marrow and crab? Quah, that's a tough call. Chase dessert, a tort, can be beautiful, can be fine dining, but it's down to presentation and lightness of touch. I've had quite a few highs and one particular low. This dish isn't right. You've overdone it. You've broken my heart here today. But I'm still here. Yeah, I had a blip, but hopefully after today they'll be just saying, wow, look what Eamon can do. Eamon, what are your two dishes? Rib of pork and tenderloin of pork with a celeriac puree and a Guinness and cider sauce. The dessert is a licorice poached pear, blackberry uh, sorbet, a sable biscuit and a little bit of lime chanteur. Not just cooking for me and John today? No, I know. Wow. <laughs> It's a, a big thrill, and I hope I don't uh, go on to disappoint yet another top chef. Uh, I won't today, I promise you guys. I'm not too sure about Eamon's pork with ale. It sounds like a, a straightforward dish that you may cook at home. Yeah, it's supposed to be pushing the boat out today. It's going to have to be super refined to impress me. Just 30 minutes left. It's the sort of food I love to eat. I think your cooking today is great. It would almost be a little bit embarrassing if I went out today. It's sort of like losing at home. Um... Tom, what are you making? You've got stuff everywhere. I'm doing crusted sirloin of beef, liver, smoked bacon and onions, uh, with a beetroot puree and a roasted garlic cream sauce. Dessert, I'm doing a ravioli of cherries and chocolate. Pasta with cherries and what? Chocolate. chocolate, yeah. Lack of time is a major issue. Um, I've given myself a lot of work. If I pull it off, it'll be brilliant. If I don't, it'll be disappointing. Pushing yourself, mate, really going for it. Why? Because I want to win. I need to stay in the competition today, and I've got to make sure that mine's not the worst dish of the day. I am confident in my food. Like I say, it's just a case of whether I can get it done in the time. The onion, the liver, we know that works together, but he's got beetroot and garlic going. I mean, there's a lot of flavours. There's a lot of process going on there. A lot of work. I try and be different, and I think that's what's kept me in. I can't believe this, that it actually works for me in a strange and crazy way. And sometimes I get told off. It doesn't work. And considering the mess which she was working in, I'm not surprised it doesn't work. But I like it. I'm going to keep being different, a bit weird, to keep John and Greg on their toes. <laughs> what, what, what's going on? What, what are your two dishes? I'm doing some tea-smoked chicken oysters on some dashi noodle jelly. And for my dessert, I'm doing a bit of a fusion dish of sticky toffee pudding with miso nitrogen ice cream. <laughs> and the inspiration is what, Aki? I've been working with um, cryogenics in my lab and I realised that it freezes things really quickly, which means that the crystals and the ice cream will be very, very smooth. I said to John that I didn't want a <laughs> scientific experiment from you. <laughs> Fingers crossed I don't, like, freeze my fingers off with the nitrogen. <laughs> Liquid nitrogen, miso, into beautiful ice cream. And she's pushing out the boat because she's got a lot to prove. I'm intrigued by that one. I love miso as it is. I love it as a flavour and as a texture. But as an ice cream, I've never come across that. And with sticky toffee pudding, for me, I don't know. Four minutes, guys. Four minutes to finish your plate. You have just two minutes. Whoa, some of these guys are pushing it. It should be just the finishing touches now. That's it. Time's up. Stop.
Andrew's first course is a crusted roast grouse on pureed neeps with Savoy wrapped sausage, blackberries, bacon crumb, and whiskey honey sauce. Followed by a chocolate and black olive tart with rosemary ice cream. The combination of honey and whiskey, but this time with grouse and not with red mullet. I think it's really well balanced, very, very daring indeed, beautifully seasoned and beautifully cooked. The sauce is lovely. It has sweetness, sharpness. It's got the fruit in there, the honey, and I really, really love your bacon crumb here. That's cooking from a professional chef, not an amateur chef. Andrew, I'm really impressed with this. Olive, chocolate and rosemary ice cream. That is genius. <laughs> it's chocolate minty licorice. It's genius. I had this written off in my mind completely as something obscure and ridiculous, but I, I commend you for it. Well done. Andrew, I love the combinations. Chocolate with black olive works. It gives a little saltiness to the chocolate, which works beautifully. The ice cream's lovely, heavenly. You're not far off. That's amazing to hear this gentleman say that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever received much praise like that for anything I've done, so... Um, <laughs> Jay's first course is pan-fried halibut with chorizo braised tomatoes, crab and potato salad, and smoked bone marrow. His dessert is a dark chocolate and hazelnut torte with candied orange peel and orange liqueur cream. Jay, that is a huge portion. It doesn't look dainty, which is such a shame. The bone marrow is over-smoked. If it was a little less smoked, I really do think that the flavour combination would work. You've shown an unbelievable skill in cooking fish. You've got it. You've got that touch. Just think about the flavour combinations. I, I actually like the bone marrow with the halibut. What I'm disappointed about is losing the crab ups and downs. Jay, for me, this is afternoon tea. Very good afternoon tea, I must say. But you need to refine on both dishes you've presented to me. Now, I don't drink as much as I did anymore, and I'm getting high on that. I love that. It's not got um, Rue Elegance stamped all over it, but it's definitely got uh, Fat Bloke licking his lips stamped all over it, that's, that's for sure. I tried to refine my food today. If it did in their eyes or not, I, I don't know. Shalina's main dish is a lobster curry with spiced peas, a potato badger, and a coriander foam. Her dessert is a deconstructed key lime pie consisting of lime mousse, chocolate ganache, ginger jelly and a chocolate coconut crumb. I think you've judged it really well. I think it's not too spicy. Has it achieved the standard I think you have. Well-cooked lobster, love the peas with it. Think the sauce is wonderful and rich. It's really soothing, really spicy. A lovely, lovely dish for me. To your dessert. The first thing I see are little flowers and petals scattered all over, which makes me think you've tried to hide deficiencies maybe in presentation. I think that's absolutely right. 
Mmm. I love the crunch. I love the fact there's a jelly in there as well. It plays great music in my mouth. It's lovely. However, I don't like the lime with the chocolate. Okay. I think the presentation is god awful. <laughs> but the flavours are delicious. Love them. I don't like the, the, the chocolate with the lime. I don't think you've, you've pulled this off at all. I, I don't like the look of it. It looks confused. To me, it, it tastes and even feels a bit confused. Um, yeah, it's just really tough when you're out there having your food, you know, critiqued. You put your heart on your plate, essentially. That's what it feels like. So, yeah, tough, <laughs> really tough. Aki has made tea smoked chicken oysters on a dashi and soma noodle jelly with clam broth, shrimp, and seafood vegetables. Her dessert is a sticky toffee pudding with miso ice cream and deep fried spaghetti dusted with clove and icing sugar. Aki, I'm not too sure about this dish. The sweet shrimp are so delicate in flavour. The broth as well, the enoki mushrooms and the little vegetables are so delicate and light that they can't take this heavy smoke that you've put on the chicken oysters. It's filling my mouth with a, a rather unpleasant acrid smoke flavour. The most prominent thing is basically like chewing on a cigarette butt. It's so strong from the smoke so overpowering that I feel sort of slightly heartbroken by it because it's such a beautiful looking thing and it really is like eating a bonfire. That does it for me. It really does. It's the first time I've ever had a miso ice cream. It's delicious. To me, it tastes like a very sweet banana. Very, very nice indeed. As for the sticky toffee pudding, it's crumbly, it doesn't seem like it's cooked quite enough for me, and um, it doesn't really hold together as a pudding. But for me, that dessert is kept alive by the beautiful ice cream that's sitting on the side. I didn't think the smoking would be such an issue. It, that just went badly wrong, and I thought, I, I thought everything was OK, but... It turned out it wasn't right. Eamon has cooked rib and tenderloin of pork with celeriac mash and a stout and cider sauce. His second course is a licorice poached pear with a blackberry sorbet, sable biscuit and a lime chantilly. Eamon, I like your presentation. The little stacks of the ribs, bordering on naff, but... Was it? But I understand why you've done it. I like the sauce. I like the combination of the celery at puree. I think you've done a good job. Thank you. I think it's a very well-conceived dish, well thought out, well executed, and I really, really like it. Thank you very much. Can we stop there? <laughs> to your dessert. I was worried that the pear was going to be overpowered by the licorice. It hasn't. They actually work. The ripe, juicy pear with licorice and lime cream is divine. Absolutely divine. Thanks, Amy, very much. Thank you, guys. I want to have a dance. <laughs> Michelle Rouge. I'll have some more of that, <laughs> please. <laughs> Tom's main is a crusted sirloin of beef with beetroot puree, 
calves liver and smoked bacon and a garlic cream. His pudding is a sweet cherry and chocolate ravioli with pistachio ice cream and a chocolate tweel. Tom, I think the combination of ingredients is absolutely right. But for me, this dish smacks of one thing, running out of time. Your centerpiece of beef is not cooked properly and is taking away from the rest of the work you put into it. You've got great textures in there. That lovely, crispy bacon and crunchy pickled onion. It would be great to have a smooth beetroot puree underneath. That was the idea. That was the idea. You ran out of time. It's such a shame. Sorry, I've got, I've got to get in there. I've got, absolutely got to get in there. We'll just both stand back, shall we? Mm. Oh, sorry. You go <laughs> first. No, go. No, go. <laughs> go. You're so enthusiastic. Please go for it. I like you two. No, I don't know about these, these two, but I absolutely love that. The idea of a uh, pasta ravioli filled with something sweet, I think, is absolutely brilliant. And chocolate and then sharp and sweet cherry, absolutely perfect. I just, I just love it. It, it, it. It's your inventiveness and creativity at, at, at its best. Combination of ingredients, perfect for me. Marriage made in heaven. The ravioli, nice and thin, but it's dry. I did bite off more than I could chew today, quite considerably. I could have made my main course much simpler and probably pulled it off, but I didn't. One of you, unfortunately, has to leave us. Please, off you go. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've seen some great cooking. You guys have got your work cut out. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. My absolute best cook of the day was Andrew. Oh, yeah. He did something different, he dared, but he got it right, John. And how right did he get it? The grouse was beautiful. The tart, I didn't expect it. Blew me away. Unfortunately, it isn't good enough to think, if I'm not the worst, you do have to be the best. And hopefully I'll be among the top performers today. Aiming the two different types of pork, a really good dish. But that pear with licorice and cream flavoured with love. John, it nearly had me on my knees. It was stunning. That round has now set my competition on track, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm a contender now. Two standout contestants today, Andrew and Eamon. Agreed. That leaves us Shalina, Jay, Aki and Tom. Shalina. That lobster curry was beautifully spiced. And I know that you guys didn't necessarily like the dessert, but there's technique coming together, and that gives me thought there's a huge amount of potential going on with Shalina. I know my curry was good, but, you know, is that enough at this stage of the competition? Is that enough, really? I don't know. Jay said today he wanted to be bolder and braver, and his fish, I mean, even Michelle said his touch was extraordinary as a cook. Jay's dessert. I mean, one of those things that just tastes heavenly, but didn't have the finesse, didn't have that edge of fine dining. Was it brave enough? You know, I mean, I'd love to be in the final five. I really, really would, because I want to push it further. I want to see how far I can push myself with it. Tom gave himself lots to do and didn't quite have enough time to do it properly. Now, you've got to expect him to be able to cook the main part of his dish. Still managed a brilliant dessert. Tom's got great ideas. He needs to be able to execute those ideas and on time. They also have to think about what is realistic to achieve, not just to do as much as you can. But, you know, it's a lesson. And if I go through, it's a lesson learned. Aki, dessert, brilliant idea. Miso ice cream, I thought, was, was just amazing. But that chicken was just way over smoked and really, really harsh in the back of your throat. It was, it was like charcoal, so bitter. How badly has she let herself down today? You never know. I got, I've been surprised more than once, you know. You don't know until it actually the decision actually is announced by John and Craig. 
Although our decision today is quite a difficult decision, for me there's one cook who is not quite moving fast enough to keep up with the pack. We've come a long way, a long way. Uh, not easy to lose one of you now at this stage. Andrew, Eamon, you two had a point to prove today and you did it with gusto. Gentlemen, you're staying with us. Take a step over there, gentlemen. There is one other person who's done enough to join Andrew and Eamon. Congratulations, Shalina. You're staying with us. So that leaves us with you three. The person leaving us is Aki. Thank you, Aki, very much indeed. Thank you. It's sad. I, I think I'm, there's going to be a lot ahead that I'm going to be missing out on. But I've, I've had a, a tremendous experience. I think it's just taught me that I can do things that I've n never thought would be possible. So I think it's taught me to have more faith in myself. Not that I didn't have a big enough head already. <laughs> won't sink in yet. I'll probably like sit bolt upright three o'clock in the morning, <gasps> gasping for breath. I'm in the final five. You know? But um, it's an amazing feeling. I've got to look on the bright side. I got through and, you know, I'm, I'm over the moon. Next time, the final five take on the most infamous challenge of all. How long have we got? Restaurant critics are intimidating. You start pushing the boat out and you get it wrong, they'll have your guts for garters. Come on. Your mouth surrenders immediately. If you had that in a, in a restaurant, you would want to write about it. Keep on working. <laughs>